think, I think so. I think now we're fluid. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, nice. anyways, you're gonna. We're, it's like you're you're an actor as well. So if if we have yes. to redo this scene like 30 times, it's nothing new to you, right? <laughs> take two. Take 21. Take I'm used two. to 50. <laughs> do Do you believe the best actors are the one who do a scene 30 times and can always put a little something different in each take? I love it. You know what? I've worked with so many different actors. I mean, really top notch, you know, Academy Award nominees like Armand Asante or, you know, John Savage. <clears throat> and they each bring something different. Yeah. Each, and then the personality ones like, you know, Richard Grieco, who has this suave, this, this stagger about him, uh, swagger, not stagger, so swagger about him. And they each bring something different. So I'm not sure which ones. I just like them to bring something. I just like to bring something. You know, and, and normally, well, here's the thing. When I work with actors, there's there's two there's two ways. Number one, some of them I'll get down and, and we'll, you know, explore each scene before before we shoot and uh, and you know, try to get them in the right mindset, the right emotional mindset. And with others, I'm like a traffic cop. Because pretty much the you know, we discuss everything prior to the whole movie. And then from then on in, I mean it's minor tweaks. I mean, I just Generally, I say, you know, action and cut, you yeah. know, and then if anything, I'll just say, you know, give me a little bit more, give me a little bit less. But I mean, that's about it. And that's what's amazing about when, you, when you're working with phenomenal actors, you know, same thing with martial artists when I'm doing fight scenes. It is so fun. It actually choreography is where I started. And that's when I get the chance to do that. Now it's like therapy, you know. Because you're you're a uh, you're pretty much a film buff. Uh, I, I would say like that maybe like me, you're a movie nerd, right? And you're one of the things that you say in your book that I have right here. One of the things that you say in your book is everybody should watch if you're if you want to be in the business, you should watch a ton of movies. And you said specifically yes. old movies. Why 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 specifically right. old movies? <clears throat> Because old movies. You know the funny thing is, especially in this in this last year. I got this thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to plug this channel, but it's Heroes and Icons. Uh -huh. And uh, they have all these old, old films. I mean, black and white westerns. And every morning, when I'm not, when I'm not working on a set, I get up at probably like five, six in the morning, and I start my two hours of watching TV. All these old westerns, black and whites, because the, the, you know, I watch them for entertainment, but also I look at the direction. I look at the actors. I look at the dialogue. I mean, they had some brilliant, brilliant scripts, brilliant actors, and they didn't have the technology we have today. You know, they they were just raw. They were there. You could literally, again, like watching Bruce Lee fight, you don't need all the coverage. Just put the camera on Bruce and holy moly, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, That's why these old films, you look at Casablanca, you see a lot of these old films, they didn't have all the inserts, cut, cutaways, cutaways. It would be, some of them would be this one long shot with two, three people in the scene. It's like, wow, you're so into it and it's exciting to watch. And you learn, you learn from their performance. It's not dependent on cutaways, camera, light, music. It's raw and it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's artistry at its best. Yeah, when you see those old movies, even Jackie Chan movies like uh, Young Master and stuff like that, you see oh, like yes. a full two-minute take, a white shot, the guy's fighting. It's, it's very much taxing on the body and taxing on the actors, but, uh, well, yes. they got it all, so they have the poise, right? So it's difficult to find yes. someone who's a, who's a good martial artist and an actor. So the mix is really... Why is it such a tough mix to find? Because... They're a rarity, to be honest with you. Mm. I mean, you could learn. You can get a lot of these martial artists. You can teach them the fundamentals of acting. But just like my friend Don Wilson, who, who, who you know, yeah. Don, Don could go to a thousand seminars, teach a guy for 10 years straight, and he would never reach the level of Don Wilson in terms of his kickboxing prowess. I think it's something that you have or you don't have, to be honest with you. You could train. You could be good. But to be great... It has to be innate, to be honest with you. As, as a stuntman myself, sometimes I get people on the streets like saying stuff like, I want to be a stunt as well. I'm a, I'm a master in kickboxing. I'm a master. I'm a black belt. I'm a 10th I'm a tenth degree black belt in nothing. And so somebody, somebody said once that they were a black belt in real fighting. Real fighting. I was like, is that a martial art? Real fighting? What the, what the heck is that? So it really, it really it stunned me for a while. But uh, So we yeah. get a lot of people like that. And... Uh, What are the common mistakes that an uh, an action actor or a martial art a martial artist 
that wants to be an actor, what are the, the biggest mistakes that he or she makes when they're starting? Uh, is it getting too close to the other person, not understanding fight choreography, really trying to hit or on the expressions? What, what would you say would be the toughest to work with in terms of their beginning in, in the acting industry as well? I think I think the first thing and the thing that, that's the most important is that they don't apply the same hard work to the acting as they do to the martial arts. That's number one. They think, okay, it's just saying words. It isn't. Um, number two, they, they, they you know, I've, I've taught hundreds and hundreds of seminars throughout the years. And the most, <clears throat> excuse me, the most fundamental thing that I start with is this. This little thing right here is, uh, is the camera lens. And I tell people, I mean, they, they look at me like I'm, I'm an idiot, but I say, look, everybody do this. <laughs> yeah. What's this got to do with fighting? When am I going to punch and fit? And I'll say, no, 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 do this. And when I show them, I say, close one eye and look through it. See how you see the world. And then as it goes out, it gets narrow, narrow, narrow. And that's your audience. You know, when you're practicing martial arts, your audience is your, your you know, your, your dojo, your students. When you're doing uh, demonstrations, you know, like tournaments, They have a broad audience, you know, so, so, so their world is here. When you're doing it for film, it narrows down to here. Uh -huh. That's number one. That's a hard concept to grasp. Number two, this is before we get into the physicality, okay? Number two, I teach that you have to have two levels of awareness. One level is the performer, the stuntman, the, the martial arts guy, mm -hmm. this guy. The other one is the actor, okay, in the scene. So this guy, the martial artist, he knows all the moves. He knows I'm going to kick, I'm going to get punched, blah, blah, blah. And so obviously it's good, he better know them. But the actor should not know them. That's where the brilliance of Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan come in because they really mastered this part so much because they already had this. They were phenomenal at this. But when they master this, it makes them exciting to watch. I mean, someone once told me, Bruce can kick, he can punch all stuff, but it's just the little things prior to the kick, prior to the punch. I mean, the little twitches, the little moves in his body, and it looks very spontaneous. And that's what you have to create, and that's a hard thing to create. Because if you see a lot of the beginners in martial arts, action films, <clears throat> they, they have brilliant moves. I mean, people, you know, with all due respect, Bruno, to, to you and everybody else, <laughs> There's Bruce Lee, there's Jackie Chan. I, I, you can't impress me with your martial arts, to be yeah. honest with you. I think it's cool. I think it's bitching. I think there's a lot of phenomenal martial artists, not to take away from them. But you know what? It's the expression on film yeah. that, that, that's exciting to watch at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you know? Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. One thing that is really interesting is... Um, Again, even in Enter the Dragon, um, it, when Han tells Jim Kelly, you know, we're, we're all boarding and we all want to win with defeat we have to face. Same thing with, with, with like, let's say, fighting. People are training. And I, I just this morning, because I, 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 I monitor my, my uh, social media feed, <clears throat> I'm always getting videos, stuff like that. And people are throwing punches, punches, pa, 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 boom, 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 brrr, speed, 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 speed. And it's cool. But it don't mean nothing. Yeah. Because again, in terms of fighting, it's easy. If the guy's standing there, I, you, Bruno, you're right there. I could throw a thousand and one punches and then and look great. But when you're moving, when you're trying to hit me, when you're trying to evade me, <laughs> that's a whole different ball game, you know. And the reason I say that is because they focus more on the punching and the kicking than on reactions. And at the end of the day, you tell unless you know more than well. Actually, my question to you, Bruno, is that. You're going to go into your first film with, with let's say, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dolph Lundgren, Don Wilson, whomever. You're hired as a stunt guy, day player. Chances are you're going to lose the fight. Chances <laughs> are. I don't know. <laughs> you know what, you maybe, think? <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? So you got to learn how to take it. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jackie Chan, that's why some of these guys, you know, whether it's Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, or, or whoever all these contemporaries are, they have the team they work with because they make them look good. I'd rather get guys who can, who can take a hell of a headshot, a punch to the face that looks like phenomenal, a body shot, than do 20 flips in the air. Yeah. That, that means more to me.
And I'm not into those uh, types of fighting nowadays, types of uh, movie fights nowadays, that it's like, <coughs> I like the tricking. I like the 540s, mm -hmm. the 720s, the corkscrews. I mean, it's oh, all yeah. good. If a guy has that as an extra, it's perfect. But sometimes yes. they can't even do a yeah. wheel kick correctly right. or with precision and with that power, that swoosh that you like to see on a movie. And then it's like they're doing a triple screw, uh, a triple cork screw with a roundhouse kick at the end. And it's like, okay, it connected. It it, it looked good. It might be good for right. this little two second scene in Avengers or something like that. But right, right. I hate it when it's tricking with fighting. I prefer fighting with a little bit of tricking, right? So, um, yes, and, and I do believe that reactions are the most the most important piece i mean you might have the best strike in the world with the the most beautiful you you might look like a butterfly doing doing a, a kick but if uh, the guy who's <laughs> receiving the kick doesn't have a great reaction what good is it going to do right <clears throat> yeah you know and another thing is is you know getting back to when i was telling you about character awareness and then and, and performer awareness is like let's say for instance a simple technique i throw punch you're going to block and i'm going to retort with another strike If I'm just, when the camera starts rolling, if I'm just the, the uh, stuntman, I already know the moves, my move is going to be here, 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 here. If I am into the character, I don't know what you're going to do. I think my intention to punch you is this is my, my Art Camacho knockout blow. I throw the punch with my whole body, my whole intention, and all of a sudden, bam, you intercept it. So not only is it a physical, but it's a psychological reaction. Now I have to, you know, do something. Yeah. See, so that leads me. So now I'm bringing that across in film. And that's what to me is exciting. Not just doing the moves, but exploding with the moves, believing in the moves and being in the moment. Just like acting when you're when you're saying dialogue with actors, even though, you know, the whole scene, you know how he's going to reply you as the actor. But when they say when they say action, you as a character don't know, you know, do you remember? Do you recall any instance in your career Uh, mostly as f either fight coordinator, fight choreographer, or um, uh, or uh, director, in which somebody sparked that thing in you, like, oh, okay, now I'm impressed. And it might be the simplest of things. Do you remember any any good moment like that with any actor, stuntman, anything that you might want to share? I mean, it sounds bad, but I can't. I th can't think of anything off the top. Um, every time I'm in the moment, I get excited over the results because what I do <clears throat> generally, I like to, uh, I know it's not the, the, the way they do them a lot in the, uh, in the Hong Kong cinema, but I like to do complete masters of fights. And unfortunately, very few times, well, you know what, actually, let me go back. There was a couple of things in, uh, with Don Wilson, uh, when I did, uh, I think it was Ring of Fire 2, we did our homage to Bruce Lee yeah. and that was fun. Huh. That was fun. We just we just went over the top, and then you know Don doesn't use weapons. He's more yeah, obviously he's a fighter, but uh, but there were some cool moments with him that were really 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 bitching. You know that you were like really bitching. Okay, he's not just a fighter. He's already turning into a pro yeah. in terms of the industry, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's so really so cool. believable. I, I love him to death. He's he's so mm -hmm. believable. Ever since I saw <clears throat> Ring of Fire. Uh, Ever, ever since I saw the first Ring of Fire, I was like, hey, he's believable. I mean, a lot of guys are, are acting. He's not acting. He's being himself. Yeah. He's, he's not going overboard. He said he said to right. me in our interview, he said something that I that I appreciated very much, which was, listen, I have like two or three ways to do this. I, I don't have like 40. I'm not Denzel Washington, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I love that sincerity, that humbleness of, of, of speaking like that about his career. And uh, speaking of yeah, humbleness. And, and done, yeah, and done. Let me let me let me sure. uh, touch on Don. Please. Number one, uh, I, I love him to death. I mean, I love him to death. He's phenomenal. I mean, it was a phenomenal. Obviously, one of the best kickboxer record speaking. And I'm not being because I'm biased. I mean, look at the records. Nobody has the record that he has. Uh, I've done like I don't know twenty something films with him as a choreographer, as a director. And um, think about him. Number one, he's he's a major. He's a soldier. He soldiers on. He soldiers on. The guy works harder than anyone I've ever ever worked with. To be honest with you, doesn't complain. Now, you know, maybe once in 20 something years I've worked with him, I've seen him lose his temper once or twice. But um, but he's just phenomenal, phenomenal. He takes he takes direction. He's he's really great. And he's in the moment. He's in the moment. And and the only the, the bad part is that 
because every time we work together, man, we laugh so much. I come out with laugh lines after the film. I hate that. You know, it's like, oh, you get wrinkles. So come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, damn it, damn it, dragon. <laughs> are you a kind director or are you tough, tough as nails? Um, I'm, I've, as, as you get older, you get kinder. But I was, I was, uh, excuse my language, I was an asshole when I was choreographing. I was really, oh my God, I'm, I'm boot camp. Uh, I'm, I was really, really getting your face. I didn't give a shit how big or how strong you were. It's like I would bring it, bring it to every film. And that's why, you know, I made a lot of enemies. A lot of people hate me. A lot of people can't stand me. But I'm sorry, guys. But that was at that moment in time, I get so obsessed with what I'm doing. You know, like when I'm doing inserts of close-ups of a hit, you know, I'd go do it again and do it again and yell and just get into it. And you would see the, you see the, the, the rage building up in the performer. But bam, then you get the moment. It's like, wow. You got it. I better leave the set early before he kicks my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how we're uh, we're doing this in a way that's I, I'm very interested in the self development in fitness also, and I have a couple of fitness questions for you uh, yeah, yeah. because of some movies w in which I saw you looking more ripped than Arnold. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you know which ones they are. I'm going to ask you about that yeah. later on. But Full I love stuff. I love how. Um, Everything in your in your career was built from 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 scratch, you know. Uh, reading your book, I saw that you're very humble and very simplistic in your in the way you talk about yourself. I mean, you don't spare either. I'm not going to say compliments, but you don't spare any type of self criticism, and you have a really really good notion of what you are. Like, for example, even when you make fun of your appearance in the book. It's something that, okay, not everybody feels so comfortable with themselves in order to do that. Um, so it, your upbringing, you started from a place of some negativity by being bullied as a right. kid, right? Do you, care to, yes. do you care to talk a little bit about that? How, how did you uh, start practicing martial arts and, and whatnot? Yeah. You know what, you know what Bruno, and here's the thing. I mean... Um, Again, I'm, 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 I'm measuring my words because I, I cuss a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it clean, trying to keep this G rated. Oh, you can cuss, you um, can cuss all you want, man. This is this is a okay. rated. Uh, what do you call it? Rated R? <laughs> rated R? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Well, man. It's it's yeah. the internet. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I I had it. You know, I had it. I, I was pretty fucked up as a kid, to be honest with you. I was like, again, and 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 so Bruno, you mentioned in the book that you know some of the stories and i went in kicking and screaming i did not want to do the book i mean i've been asked for a couple of years different people approached me hey we want to do a book and i said who the hell you know <laughs> wants my stupid art camacho stories i did it and it was a very cathartic experience because it made me look at my journey from from the barrio To, to where I am even sitting in front of you, which which I really appreciate you, you taking the time and thinking that, you know, somewhat important to talk to. Um, but, but, you know, a lot of people, and, and, I've, and I say this because I know people who are of the pity me, you know, I got beat up. Yeah, I got jumped. Five guys jumped me. They fucked me. Uh, I'll tell you, man, I got 11 stitches over my eye. I'm at stitches in the head, you know, busted everything, you know. And... Um, And, and I, I was afraid. I was afraid after that, that experience to leave my house for three weeks. I didn't want to get my butt kicked. I was so afraid. But then that fear started turning into rage. It started turning into rage. And I was really, really screwed up. And I started, you know, you know, started really pushing it. <clears throat> and so simultaneously, I discovered Bruce Lee. So these were two kind of like the perfect storm in my life, getting beat up discovering Bruce Lee. And, and, and again, I won't get into how I discovered him, but just seeing him for the first time explode on the screen just changed my whole life. It was like an epiphany. And, uh, and all those things combined started changing my life for the better. Of course, you carry the scars. I wear them as, as badges of honor. You know, I give a lot of talks now with people because people think, again, and, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little guy, number one, but A lot of times people think you're, you make movies, you're in Hollywood, you've traveled around the world, blah, blah, blah. 
covers, magazines, they think that you've lived a, a blessed life. And hell no. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no, no. I am you. I am everybody out there. I'm that little fat kid in the theater. I'm that little fat kid in the barrio, in, in the hood. You know, I am him. The only difference is that I had a passion inside. I always felt something out of the normal because even my, 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 my family, you put me next to my family, you wouldn't recognize me. You say, who, 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 that guy doesn't belong in that group. Nothing bad against them, just different. And, um, and that's, that's what it is, brother. I mean, you, you know, I, I turned this thing, and I'm not saying, I'm not like the self-help people that say, oh, yeah, turn that positive into negative. Hell no. Hell no. After, after you cry, <laughs> after you get down, after you wipe the boogers off your face, yeah. then you get back into it. Then you, then you say, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to let it beat the shit out of me every day of my life? Or am I going to beat the shit out of it? Because my intention in martial arts was to find those guys, to be honest with you. I said, maybe I won't be able to take out five guys, but I'm taking one. And I will swear to God, I'm going to beat the holy hell out of that one. Instead, now my attitude is, I want to find them to thank them. Because of them, I became what I wanted to be. You know? It's so cool. My, my whole universe growing up was my barrio. Your barrio is, is your little square neighborhood area, and and the martial arts, Bruce Lee, and, and everything. All of a sudden, my universe became the world, literally the world. I've traveled and shot in different countries, and for me, I'm still in shock, still in shock. I mean, that I've lived the experiences that I have. Not that I told you, I'm a little guy in Hollywood, just a little speck of sand, but kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess everybody, even the most successful ones. When they're uh, among their peers, they always feel like, when are they going to find out that I'm a fraud? <laughs> I heard that yes, once. Yes, every time. <laughs> In every film, brother. I heard every like, film. I don't know if it was Al Pacino or something, or, or, or someone like that saying something like that. And I was like, really? <laughs> But so if they feel like that, I don't, I don't mind if I feel like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bruno, real quick story is I was shooting a film at Universal Studios Backlot. I had an office on the, on, the, on the lot. How crazy is that? So one day, we started this film. It was uh, Redemption, I think, with, with Don Wilson. It was a, it was, that was a fun film. Mm -hmm. But I'm driving, and when you get to the set, when you shoot on the lot, they give you a pass, and you go through the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, the tour, the way it used to be, where they take you to little Roman town and European towns and all that. So I'm driving there like five, six in the morning, right? And my heart just starts beating fast. It's like, what the hell? What the hell am I doing here? What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> and I'm driving. Then I get to our street. And for, for as far as the eye can see, you see trucks, people. I mean, just, and I swear to God, for a split second, I was going to turn the car around. I was going to go home, man. I said, <laughs> they're going to find out. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> they're going to get me, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how uh, sometimes even after years of experience, one can always feel something like that. Like, uh, maybe I'm not cut out for this. And it's like, what? You've been doing this for 20 years? Come on. I mean, I guess, I guess uh, yes. we're, we're all, we're, we all have those, those uh, self-doubting moments. And uh, I'm, 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 one of the things that made me laugh in, in a good way because you overcame it was the words by your <laughs> uncle. One day your uncle sat no, you down. Oh and what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? He said, I love him to death, and I'm always paraphrasing him. And this is out of love. He said, Mijo, when I told him, I sat him down one day, I think, you know, again, around that period of time, 1516, and I had I never shared this with anyone. And I had told him, I said, you know what, uncle? He was, t he was grooming me to be a jeweler. Him and his, uh, my two uncles are, are jewelers by trade. And so I told him, you know what? Deep down. I don't know, I would love, love, love to do movies, you know, maybe an actor. And and and, and, and he took me, he says, mijo, come here, come here, mijo, come here, come here. And he says, um, um, that's good, that's good, but you know what? You're fat, you're ugly, you have no personality. Get a real job, mijo. Oh. I don't want to see you suffer. You know, it's like, and I go, wow. <laughs> what wow. would Tony Robbins and say I'm about that? <laughs> that's <laughs> That's great for the motivation. Thanks, uh, uncle. Uh, <laughs> gracias, yeah, gracias, tío. Gracias, gracias, tío. tío. <laughs> and I believed it, you know. I believed it. I believed it, every word of it. And I just said, okay, <laughs> chuck that out. <laughs> and, um, but you know wow. what? Uh, to this day, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to him, thankful to every positive and negative experience I've had in my life, you know. 
it's not it's not good don't get me wrong hell mm -hmm. i wish i didn't have to go through that but sometimes you have to go through that to to be where you are you know hell yeah maybe you made you stronger so where, where did you start the martial arts practice <clears throat> i started uh, in uh, japanese karate over here in, uh, in uh, i think norwalk in california and um after three months, the, the instructor, very nice guy, very, very nice guy. And he, he, he was a friend of my father. So he told my father, he says, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think I was cut out for this. You know, I think you're wasting your money. So, you know, and I didn't care. I didn't want to do it. It's like, oh my God, stretch, kick. What are you nuts? Give me the ho hos and the grape sodas, man. I don't want this, <laughs> this karate shit, man. So I quit that. <clears throat> and then, and then, then a couple years later, I tried Taekwondo. Same thing. I was good. I did a couple of tournaments, but eh, just wasn't into it. And, and, and again, when I say these arts, they're phenomenal arts, and there's a lot of great people. The, the Rees, all these people are just phenomenal. I'm just not that phenomenal, <laughs> you know. But I discovered, um, I went to a seminar once with Eric Lee. He was doing a seminar at this uh, World of Bruce Lee Museum. And, and to me, and, and again, just my opinion, he was the closest to Bruce Lee as, as, as I could see. Because this little guy, when he could move, he exploded. It's like, wow, watching him do it. I want to do that. And so that's what got me hooked. And that's where I started in One Hop Quendo. And then throughout the years, I've, I've gravitated towards different training with different people in JKD or, or Sansu Kung Fu. And obviously, I trained a little bit at the Kali Academy and then Kali and stuff like that. And it's all been fun. And then just amateur. I did a, did a year or two of amateur boxing just to really get get in the flow of things. But it's it's all been like an amalgamation of a lot of things. But my core, even now in the last, <laughs> last five years, I've been training in Wing Chun with, with Sifu Samuel Kwok. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, uh, I learned so much from him. Because, again, every time I go to anybody, as long as I've been doing different martial arts, I'm always a white belt, always a white belt, always learning, you know. And uh, But it's, it's been phenomenal. It, the martial arts changed my whole life, I'm telling you, brother. It saved my life, you know. Many, many years ago, <clears throat> I had the uh, opportunity to, uh, to, to train a little bit, very little. I'm not a student, but we were doing a film together. It's Joe Lewis. Are you familiar with him, oh, Joe yeah, Lewis? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joe phenomenal guy loved him to death man <clears throat> you know what what i really respected about him is that he admitted his own shortcomings he admitted he's he's he was at the top but he made so many big mistakes but as a martial artist here here you know i, I trained with him we were in north carolina he went to a couple of his classes and same thing i felt like this guy's like you know 20 years older than i was and i was in my prime i'm buff and strong and this stuff but i felt like a little schoolgirl <laughs> compared <laughs> to him <laughs> he's like don't don't hurt me joe those guys, they have the blueprint for what you're going to do before you even think about doing it. So I'm going to throw yes. a jab. They're like, I'm, I'm way ahead of you, buddy. <laughs> I, I saw that jab like 10 seconds away. <laughs> Screw off. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. That's funny. Absolutely. And so and, and uh, how did the movies uh, come, uh, come to you? I mean, you were working in uh, other stuff. Uh, I remember yeah. you were talking about Orange Julius. I, Orange I, Julius. I, I, I find that name very, very <laughs> funny because since I'm from Portugal, I don't know a lot of those those franchises. But Orange Julius is a is a is a cool name. <laughs> Dude, a lot of these drinks, these uh, when you go to these places, it's like eighty percent syrup, a little bit of orange juice just to give it color. But uh, but yeah, I was working Orange Julius, and I had an you know I was like uh, God. I think it was my my early twenties. I think it was. But um, I was working there, and the reason the reason I got there is because you know I had dropped out of school. Then I wanted to go back to school, so I needed some money for books and stuff. So I got a part time job there, you know. And and there was such a high turnover because there was so many screw ups getting hired left and right and fired. So two two to three weeks, I was assistant manager promoted. Just there was nobody else left. So I said, hey, Eric, do you want to be assistant? Black belt. Okay. <laughs> we, we got your black belt. Yeah. Orange Julius black belt. Here, <laughs> Here you good. go. You got your promotion. And I swear to God. So then I did that. Then uh, then two, two, three months later, again, I went to two managers. And then the, the district manager came down there. He goes, <laughs> left man standing. It's like, okay, you want to be a manager? So I was a manager, you know, <laughs> at seven, no, 17. That's why I got it. At 17, I became manager. It was, it was, uh, it was funny. Uh, and um, and so I, I worked there like three years. That was the longest job I've ever had, to be honest with you. I think I worked three or four years there. But <clears throat> at one point, at one point, it got to a point because I'm a lazy bastard. I will teach everybody my job so I don't have to do it. So I was hiring all these, these part-time employees, but I was showing them how to run a store. 
So I go there, open the gate, put the money in the till, buy a shitload of comic books, and go in the toilet and read all day. <laughs> They're running the store. I'm just taking a shit or reading. <laughs> and that's it. That was my life. See, but that was and communication. That's, that's, but that was the power of yes, communication. There you go. <laughs> if, if, if you Absolutely. weren't, if you weren't able to communicate that well and put them doing your job, basically, it was you. You wouldn't be there. Communication is so important. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, commun- it was. Yeah, you know. But but I was sitting there one day, and this is true. It sounds like a made up story, but it's true. I was sitting there one day, reading my comics because I used to buy a stack weekly. I'd buy my stack, so every day I'd have a new comic, and it's like all of a sudden. I had like almost an anxiety attack on the toilet. I said, my God, I'm washed up at 20. This is it. I'm going nowhere. My life is over. I'm going to end up in the next 10, 20 years sitting on toilets, reading comics all my life. I can't. I can't. What happened to all your dreams? It's, I'm, I swear to God, I'm having this stupid conversation on the toilet while I'm sitting there reading comics, taking a shit. And, and I said, you know what? <laughs> I did it. I said, you know what? Done. Done. This is over. I, you know, shortly thereafter, quit my job. I, I I flew myself to New York. I said, I'm going to be an actor. I want to do this, do that. And within two months, I was living out of my car. <laughs> I was dirt broke. No. I was just, you know, on uh, almost, almost homeless completely. And uh, little by little, my life started turning around. And uh, But that was it. I just took that leap, that leap of faith. And uh, wanting to do something more than life, thinking, not even wanting, to be honest with you, Bruno, I, you know what I hate, what I hate, hate, hate about, I guess, life for myself is that I don't feel that we are necessarily in control. I feel that God or whatever forces compel us through our through our spirit, through our genetic makeup, whatever it is, something keeps pushing us. Because so many times I've tried to walk away and, again, keep being drawn back into this. I walk away, I get mad at life, I get whatever, you know, go through my little tantrums. And then I say, okay, this is it, done. And then something always pulls me back. And that's been my life, you know? But um, but I'm serious, man. I, I I think to myself, I could have been happy at Julius right now. We, I could have been sitting on the toilet, new comic books, <laughs> little pot belly, happy. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the, the weight of responsibility, the bigger it, it becomes, the bigger anxiety it creates, right? But... Uh, but then yeah. you're not living a fulfilling life if you don't go, and this is that stupid cliche sentence. But if you don't go out of your comfort zone, so everything that's 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 any good will be out of that comfort zone that you're in, in the toilet reading, <laughs> reading Marvel comics. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens afterwards? <laughs> what happens afterwards? I um. I started figuring out how to do, like, I did some extra work. I said, how do you do this? So I started doing research, and I started doing some extra work. And little, and you know what? I, the way I took it, here's, here's the two things. I, I, think, I think I did it for a few months. But the interesting thing is that you get the professional extras who pretty much do it, and every now and then they'll get a day player part. <clears throat> but they come in with their chairs, their books, zoom over to craft service table, eat, sit, you know. They, they do the bare minimum, yeah, the majority that I saw. <laughs> and um that was good for the first couple of days man i was getting fat <laughs> i was eating cookies and pastry and everything <laughs> great catering you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> even better than at home man <laughs> um but 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 what i started doing believe it or not i started kind of sneaking up on sets i mean when i was there and you know the, they'd have the extras holding area and all that stuff but i would go behind and start you know wow seeing how they set up cameras and lights you know seeing listening to the director listening to the communication between the director the dp and then seeing the actors and and so i took that as a learning thing i said you know what if i'm gonna sit on my ass all day for 40 bucks a day might as well do something and then um i still then i discovered there was this magazine at the time i think it was drama log i think it was called drama log and i started subscribing to that because then they they used to give like uh acting notices so you know trying to go to auditions and stuff in the meantime just working odd jobs just trying to pay the bills and out of the blue one of those films that i did as an extra called steel justice it was a film with martin cove and i was a you know big uh, cagney and lacy fan and um it happened it, it so happened that my my sifu was there because they had a lot of asians there doing stunts 
So I kind of reconnected with him and he pulled me aside. He goes, oh, no, come, come on, Art, hang out with the stunt guys and be with us. And one of the first stunt films that I did. You will die quickly for shame in the general side. And a girl will die slowly, very slowly. And shortly after that, at that point, he was starting to do Don Wilson films, uh, choreography. <clears throat> so shortly after that, he called me to do Ring of Fire. And again, I, I had no formal training in martial arts, stunts, or stuff like that. I just used to do it as a kid, and I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, and I'm very passionate about it. So, so we did this fight scene in Chinatown, which is really cool. A bunch of guys fighting. And it happened to be where... Uh, I know, with Dale, Dale Jacoby, right? Dale Jacoby says yeah, like... Yeah, Dale uh, Jacoby. Yeah. Yeah. And you can dolls and, uh, shouldn't be here, right? <laughs> you can dolls. Yeah, yeah the guy, uh, uh, Stephen Vincent Lee. Yeah. Right. Brilliant dialogue, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that little Buddha head shouldn't have been in Venice. Well, you Ken dolls shouldn't be here. <laughs> that movie has great lines. That movie has great yeah. lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, that film helped me in more ways than one because one of my jobs, one of part of the choreography, which I had little knowledge of choreography, I just used to love to do it as a kid, you know, just play around. And um, I come into the guy, he gives me a spinning back kick. So he kicks me really hard, to be honest with you. But but it was good. It was right here at the chest. So literally my feet, I went flying, flying physically. My feet go off the ground. I go flying into cement. Ouch. But, you know, no big deal. You're young. You're, you're okay. Um, so that's take one. Take two, same thing. You go into it. And by this point, okay, so I said, okay, well, I'll just be a little lighter on my feet so it doesn't hurt me as hard. So he kicks me. And uh, same thing, but this time it came a little, little bit higher, came about right here. Mm. So, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it got a little scary, but at the time, you know, you're young, you don't, you don't think shit, you know? Um, but my feet were a little looser, so it didn't hurt as much because I was already, I just, literally, my, my body just went flying back, right? A little farther. So take two, okay, hit myself. I had no pads, no nothing. You know, I didn't know any better. <clears throat> so take three, I come at it. Now, now I'm getting into my groove. I said, now I know how to fly back. I know how to take a fall. I go rushing into him. He kicks me. It literally hits me on the throat. Oh, True story. Mm. But it hits me on the throat. But, but Bruno, the funny thing was that I was so loose at that point, it hurt me even less because I literally, the minute the impact came, my feet just went flying up over my head and I went flying back, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm on this cement. And in my head, you know, you know, when you're, you're doing these films and you're knocked out, you can't move until they say, you know, cut. And because I didn't hear cut. I said, oh, shit, my first job and I'm fired. I'm, I swear to you, man, I was like so bummed. I was lying there with my eyes closed. It seemed like hours, but it was probably only like a minute or two. And I didn't hear cut. So, so with my eyes closed, finally I said, you know, fuck it. They're going to fire me. They're going to fire me. I opened my eyes and I look at people standing around me. And they're looking down. They thought I was killed because they saw the throat get, you know, the, the kick to my throat. They thought I was injured for life and i oh. thought i was fired you know that's oh why the director God. didn't yell cut they just ran over there and they're looking down <laughs> thinking are you okay i go yeah i sorry guys sorry for what i said i must have screwed up the guy's kick sorry you know i was like i was apologizing left and right and they're like they couldn't understand it next thing you know the night goes through and then i hear one of the producers say hey let's bring that mexican guy back man he just gets hit and he doesn't complain and he works cheap so that's what started my career you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great start. Who kicked you? Was it Vince Murdaco or were you no, on his team? I think it was it was either Vince or somebody else. I don't even remember now. I think it was, I think it could have been Vince. <laughs> yeah, good guy. I love him to death. Yeah, that guy's got a strong leg, man. Whoa, that, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's how it started. I, uh, my my SAG card. They gave me my first choreography gig, uh, my first directing gig. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. There was no that incident. There was no turning back. Wow. So that was the first thing that got you everything. Everything after that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, been ups and downs in life, but you know, I, I tell you, you know, <clears throat> here I am. And here's the thing: I think, I think one thing that I do have is great work ethic. I never give 100. percent I always give 200. Mm -hmm. I am, I, I, you know, I have such it in me. I hate failing, and I fail a lot, 
but I always try to improve, improve, improve. I'm always learning. And, uh, and I think that's why they started hiring me because at that point, these were low budget films. So, I mean, time is money. Time is money. You know, I, I worked with just, you know, several years ago, I worked on a Steven Seagal movie. That one we had, like, let's say, for instance, it was a bigger film. So we have probably like three weeks to rehearse, four or five days to shoot each sequence. When you do these independent films, you're lucky if you have 20 minutes, 30 minutes to rehearse and an hour to shoot the stuff. You know, so you got to be good. you got to be good. And that's one thing that I just picked up really quick. So I knew, I knew I was, I was in my element because I could capture it very quick and just bam, 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 should go, just go through it. So from there, from there on, and was it was it Ring of Fire before Magic Kid? Yeah, your Ring of Fire. Well, no, no, I Ring of Fire. Yeah, I think it was because that's what introduced me to PM Entertainment, and then afterwards, <clears throat> you know, I started doing the choreography with them. But yeah, mm. Ring of Fire was first. Ring of what Fire was first, and we did Magic Kid. Yeah. Yeah, because I I, I used to love watching uh, Ted Dan Roberts uh, movies, the the Magic Kid, and yeah. what, whatever happened to him? Where is he? Nobody knows about him. You know. Nope, he just fell off the face of the earth. I, I never, the guy had an amazing career. I mean, he was groomed to be what he was doing. I mean, he would, I'm telling you, man, he would, he had every day, he had martial arts classes, gymnastic classes, acting classes. And then, then he would, you know, go on diet. I mean, the guy was just, you know, at 15, my God, he was just, he was, he was destined for this. And um, then we did Magic It 2. And then uh, I got very blessed and unfortunate to my first directing film was to direct him in The Power Within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I remember that, that was a, with Geraldo Camus. That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I tell you, that film, to this day, it's still one of my favorites. My first film as a director and one of my favorites to this yeah. day. It's not, a, really... it's not an easy movie. It's like a mystical movie, you know, like with all the superpowers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, the funny thing was every day the producers would, would throw something at me like like one day they'd come at me, they 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 say, Hey, you know what? Animals are selling good, so so we gotta put an animal in there. Go, what what are you talking about? The next day I lost one of my cameras because we had like two or three cameras, and I talked to my DP. I said, Hey, set the camera three over here. He goes, Oh, we lost it. I go, What do you mean you lost it? Well, the producer traded it in for a monkey. Okay, <laughs> so we got a monkey for a camera. So we got and that's and then how do you write it into the scene? Okay, were so you working with Siegfried and Roy or something? I don't get that. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, we don't need a camera. We need a monkey. We don't need a camera. We need <laughs> yes, a monkey. Yeah. yeah. We were having the monkey just bare. All of a sudden, his little pecker sticking up, so that we have to put a diaper. It's like, oh shit! Reshoot everything. <laughs> the monkey pecker. <laughs> I, I also love that movie. I also love that movie, Tiger Heart, uh, directed oh, Tiger by Heart. a friend yeah. George George oh Shamsun. Yes, yeah. yes. Nice. Yes. I love that movie. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun film. Fun film. And Eric, Sensei. Later on, you did a couple of movies that I really love, and uh, you stood out from the rest of the guys, especially in To Be The Best. When you guys are working out, and I see you all with your hands on the ring, you know, your guys right, are on the right. ring, and everybody's <laughs> holding hands, and then you go with your hands up, and it's like, who the heck is that guy with those abs and those pecs, man? So how did you get so... So uh, if if we watch your chronological uh, mm -hmm. um, appearances in movies, you can see right. the, you can definitely see that your physique has gotten better over the movies. And I can think of two movies in which I thought you looked amazing, which are uh, to be the best in Firepower, where you play uh, where you play Viper. So. How did you start to uh, how did you start to mind your fitness a little more? Where you started? Were you starting to bodybuild? Uh, were you taking care of your diet a little bit better? Uh, what happened? You know what happened is I did this one film. <clears throat> I won't tell you which one, but and here's the thing: 
uh, when you you asked me earlier behind the, I don't know if it was on camera or off camera, about how do I work with people? Am I tough? Am I not tough? But <laughs> I did a film uh, with, with my Steve Herrick Lee hired me to do a fight in this film. Mm -hmm. Take off my shirt, and um, and he didn't tell me. I mean, he, he was he was nice. He's a very nice guy. He wouldn't tell me. I will. I'll tell you if you look fucking fat. Um, and I look fat. I look disgustingly fat. I mean, I look kind of you know, kind of just bulky, not not like obese, you know, flabby, but just fat. And I was so disgusted and so embarrassed. You said you didn't want to mention the movie, so I'm not going to ask right. you which movie was it. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> I'm not going to do you it, know. Art. Art. Who, who's that fat Mexican? <laughs> no, he'll say, who's that fat Mexican there fighting? Put on your shirt. Put on the shirt. Here, here's a jacket. Come on, Art. No, what, you're what, ripped, man. I, what what I, movie I was it? Don't, don't change subject. Which movie was it? Come on, don't change subject. <laughs> okay, I don't want to say No movie. Say. It's a foreign movie. <laughs> <laughs> was oh, it man, Emmanuel? I was so... Part three? He's <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Two, the sequel. Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Anatomia de Grey. Anatomia de Grey. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course. It was yeah. so bad. I'm telling you, brother. And, and That's I swear a great to God, motivation. I, I didn't... That is a great oh motivation God, for yeah. us to, to, to start. I mean, that happened to me. That happened to me. I was like mm -hmm. five years ago. I was I was ripped. And now I'm looking at myself. I'm like, you, dude, you're starting to slack off because people already <laughs> know you that you're ripped, good. It's like people already know that I'm good with fitness or I'm decent with fitness mm -hmm. and I can do this and I can do that. I can still lift weights. I can still jump. I can still do the splits. But every once in a while, I look at my at myself and I'm like, okay, yeah, you're you're starting to enjoy dessert a little bit uh, too much, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. And that's where I am now, man. I still I'm still keep pretty good shape, but the leanness it's it's a challenge because again, I'm a fat kid. I'm from fat jeans, so. You know, it's a challenge. It's a daily struggle. And I see this. You know, what I'm saying it's funny is that I see, obviously, the, the people that are real close to me, like Don or Cynthia, they're always in phenomenal shape. But then you see a lot of these martial arts people who, you know, I look at their pictures 23 years ago and you see them now. It's like with the big gut. And it's like, wow, wow, mm -hmm, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, Success happened, I, I right? <laughs> Success yeah, might be poisonous, be right? It, it can be damaging in a way, right? Yeah, I think I think it's it's more more than success. I think it's being comfortable, too comfortable. Yeah. And I always like to live on the edge. If I'm too comfortable, then it's not good. Then it's not good. Then then I my I'm telling you, man, I need to to be challenged. I need to every day be challenged and and push physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, always. Because when because I'll be honest with you, when I reach those points where it's too comfortable, I, I get depressed. Yeah. I really do. I just you know, I I need I need that that's the stimulant. Not that I'm 24/7 a nut job, but I need to be you have a vision, have to keep going forward. You know. Yeah, it's like uh, knowing that we need to get back to Rocky mode every once in a while. Like remember what it was like being being poor. You know, because I, I yeah I, I wasn't in extreme poverty or anything like that but i was poor once and i'm like uh right sometimes i i miss the feeling of no 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 i i have to there's a pressure that's pu putting me against the wall so i really must do something and i yes. can't slack off if i catch myself right. slacking off i'm thinking of well i should be rocky again but then there's no motivation because you get too comfortable so it's it's really a difficult yeah. uh, fight within yourself um But what what did you change? If if we can get more into the specifics, what did you change in your diet for the movies? Uh, now that you had this goal, this objective behind it, uh, like going to the movies and looking good and never wanting to look sloppy again, what did you change in your right. diet and your training routines, specifically? You know what I did? <laughs> I started basically. I, I spent like months. I think three four months, where ninety percent of my diet was either uh, tuna, chicken lettuce green beans uh you know a couple of corn tortillas in the day to get some carbs and then running every day running and apart from martial arts training and apart from weightlifting but that was it the diet was the hardest thing because i mm. love sweets i love them like there's no tomorrow and um uh, and i just cut cut back on the on a lot of the carbs a lot of the carbs man because that was my that was my 
Twinkies, ho hos. I love those, man. <laughs> you know, I yeah. love them. You know, and, but you look uh, good, man. You look it. great. So I, I guess you learned to live with it, which means that uh, in the in the long run, you've learned to deal with it, and maybe uh, every once in a while you can indulge. But uh, uh, mainly, you have uh, this, you probably have this uh, huge uh, balance in your life, and you know uh, when to not go overboard, right? Nope. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Cut to nope, commercial. Nope, nope. Cut to commercial. <laughs> nope, sorry. Are what about alcohol? Do you me, drink uh, do you drink booze? Do you do you like alcohol? You know, I I love alcohol. You know what, what it started later in life because I was always so obsessed with always being in control. So even during my youth I never I never indulged at all. I never wanted to be, you know, out of control. Now I'm more relaxed, so I so mm -hmm. I so I so I'm more relaxed about it. But uh, but you know, do I indulge? Do I get drunk? No. I think mm. I think I've only gotten drunk twice in my lifetime. Once when I was 16, and uh, once I guess. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And oh, uh, same man. thing with drugs. To be honest with you, even with drugs. To be honest with you, and I'm being straight up. You know, I've I've tried pot. I think it's fine. Uh, you know, speed. I tried it once on on, on set, and on a set, I would never do it again. Yeah, on a set. Yeah. What 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 got you to try speed on the set? Somebody just said, "Hey, I was tired," and he says, "Here, try you know mm -hmm. you know you know try something." And uh, and, um, and I swear to God, I was like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> I was like, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> was it but, in Ninja but, Academy? But, I love that movie, wasn't it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because you were Gonzalez in Ninja Academy. <laughs> You're Gonzalez, I know, man. That's funny. No problem. But I tell you, uh, that that movie is so funny. It's so um, underrated. There's nothing better. Yeah. I, I mean, a, a couple of those older movies that people yeah. would love to watch. You know, like sometimes mm -hmm. we 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 talk about comedies and we go like, oh, there's not enough good com uh, comedies anymore and stuff like that. If if right. I know I, I have a a lot of friends which that are not into the martial arts that if they saw the Ninja sure. Academy, I think it would make a, a a comeback. Like it's one of the <laughs> it's so one of those. Smoke some weed and watch it, and you're gonna laugh the That's entire it time. It's it's really right. it's uh it's so goofy that it's great, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think of it but that the way. Funny thing, the funny thing about that is that it was the worst director on the fucking planet. <laughs> the worst director. Who was it? I swear to you, man. I was uh, Nico Masterakis. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, the guy was just a bad person on the set. I swear oh, to God, really? I never. And I, I, yeah, yeah, yelling and cussing, and I mean, to the oh. point where, where he wouldn't give direction, but when you do something, he'd put you down. It's like, what the hell is this, man? But it was a good experience because of that. It was fun, and the, the you know, the setting and all the all the friends, you know, Gerald and James and all those guys. You know, was was Martha but, uh, Cascos in that movie as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in the credits, it it, the, uh, yeah, it was one of the ninjas, probably, was, right? Yeah, 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 right. Because oh. at that time, I think they was going to write a strike, and it was a non-union film, so a lot of people were working. You know, they wanted to work. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people were in that film, man. It's funny. funny so, but, and I don't like to talk. I don't like to badmouth people, so I apologize. But yeah, no. I, just, I mean, I just remember the the experience was not. Was You're just being factual. I mean, if, if a director cusses a lot and yells a lot, that's your experience. Yeah. That's that's what you come up yeah. with. I mean, uh, people people ought to know factually how they made other people feel because sometimes you sure. can do art, you can be creative without being a jackass, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But yeah, we all we all but, made but, mistakes. You know, yeah. And see, see, Bruno, what I see there's a difference between. Let's say, for instance, uh, I'll push. I'll say. Bruno, get, get your fucking kick. Come on, kick me fucking harder. And I'll be yelled like that versus, Bruno, you're an idiot. What the yeah. fuck are you thinking? There's, yeah. there's a difference. There's a difference, you know? And some people, I'm pushing. I push you and I push, 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 push. But I'll never insult people. Never. Because I keep, that's not that's not right to me. That's that's you know? great, man. Because that motivates me. Sometimes that puts the puts mm -hmm. the pressure on me, the, the way you do it. Because my mm -hmm. stunt coordinator is is by by far one of the best people that i know he's really just he's really sincere but he's got that edgy personality that he goes like he says something like you want me to get one of the lady extras to do this for you you piece of shit but that motive it's not it's right. not yes. just putting me down because yes. the first stunt coordinator i had 
I was trying to 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 headbutt uh, the actor or to make it look like it was uh, was headbutting him. Sure. And the guy didn't know anything about camera angles, so instead of instead of saying something like, "Okay, try to cross the line," uh, he said right. something like, uh, "It's so shitty, it's so shitty," oh. and I was like. That's not even that's not even helping me. If you're saying it's shitty, what should I do? So obviously what I thought about doing was, okay, I got to get closer to the actor because it's not feeling yeah. real. Obviously, what do you think happened in my first job? I obviously had but the shit out of the guy. <laughs> I, I I almost broke his nose, but he started bleeding. So it was like, okay, th sure. th that's it. Uh, I'm not going to be <laughs> in Portugal's <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> anymore. <laughs> enough, Good enough for me. <laughs> See you guys. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a good direction. It's good direction. Um, speaking yeah. of direction, so later on, when, once you uh, got to be a producer... I'm sure you came up with all your know-how that you got ever since you were in Orange Julius and then as an extra. So you got to you got through all trade aspects. Uh, so I'm sure yeah. that it's like owning a restaurant, but actually having been to the kitchen, actually having cooked the meals, right? Did you yes. feel that you had an edge? <laughs> over maybe other producers because you have been, you had been to through all of the stages of, of, of production? You know what? Yes and no. I think, um, I think the only thing is, here's the thing. You've got people who, who worked with companies and studios uh, all their career. And that's fantastic. I mean, I believe me, I wish I could do that, but that wasn't my destiny. But then you have people like me who've had to hustle for everything. So my, my mindset is always in the mindset of hustling. You know, I finish a job, I'm looking for the next job. I finish a job, even though, you know, things are going good, you always have that mindset. So when, when adversity happens, <laughs> you're kind of used to it. I mean, that's never good. Adversity is never good, but you're already used to it. Whereas as somebody who's, who's used to their, their paycheck every month, every week, you know, all of a sudden, you know, like right now we're going through the series with people are closing businesses and, you know, unemployment and a lot of this stuff. It's more of a culture shock, more of a, a traumatic experience, not having that regular paycheck versus mm. me knowing it's like, shit, I might not eat next month, so I better do something, you know? Mm. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's the thing. That's where I think the, <clears throat> the advantage is because again, I didn't start from nowhere. I have no contacts in Hollywood. I have nothing. And so every day, every day, even still, as much as I've done, I've done nothing. I still got to go out there and hustle. And, and now, now easier because the social media and, 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 and I use that just to share, number one, share with people what I do, but also, you know, let people know, hey, you know, I've been around a little while, but look, I'm still still kicking ass, still vital, still relevant. That's the thing. I, I always that that word always resonates in my mind. How am I relevant every year? Every year, I don't want to be the kind of person that I did a film 20 years ago. I did a directed this 10 years ago, five years ago. What am I? What What am I doing now? How am I being relevant? You know. Mm. So a couple of uh, your <laughs> fights are my favorites. Uh, I would say the first fight uh, that I've actually uh, rewatched yesterday is the one you have with Michael Worth in uh, the movie Final Impact with Lorenzo Lamas. Right. I really like that fight because it's the first fight of his tournament, of his final tournament. But uh, it's like he almost had as much difficulty winning that fight against you as the final guy. <laughs> so it was really, really good. And I I, I, I caught a few uh, excellent moments there. Uh, and the other one which you sent me is the fight you had with Goldberg. Can you remind us the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half Past Dead too. I had done Half Past Dead with Steven Seagal. And then a few years later, the producer called me because uh, I had choreographed and did all the action on that one. But he said, this one, we want you to direct. And with Goldberg, I said, great. So it was, number one, Goldberg is phenomenal, phenomenal athlete, control, everything. It's just, and I think he's a good actor too. I think I, I enjoyed his, 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 as a person, everything about him. And um, that, that fight came about because the producer comes to the set one day, says, all right, we need another fight in the film. I said, great. You know what? I'll call a couple of guys. No, no, no. We want you to do it. I know, uh, Andrew's his name, Andrew C is a good buddy. I said, Andrew, you know, I'm directing this thing, you know, I'll, I'll get somebody, look at, look at how short I am. Look at Goldberg. He's this fucking giant. <laughs> I'm this little cockroach. <laughs> he said, no, Art, come on. Who better than you? He'd look at you. You're, you're this, you're that. I want you to do it. I don't want you to bring anybody else in. You got to do the fight. So then I'm thinking, how am I going to 
last two seconds. <laughs> He's just going to do this and I'm done. So that's what I use. That's why I use the, the, the stick as a yeah, we're gonna watch like the fight. Screamo. We're going to watch the fight. If you, if you don't mind uh, saying a couple of words while we're watching the fight. So you, yeah. you can watch the fight, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I had to get him out of the way. <laughs> so now, now I see this giant coming at me. I swing it out there and boom, boom. There's there's nice. my little escrape training coming in. And I love, want to keep it fluid. Love the intensity oh, behind each kick. each shot. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. There you go. See, what I want to do is speed versus brawn, you know? Mm -hmm. And right here, he traps me, so what can I do? Oof. Oof. <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> that was. See, that's one of the funny things. Huh? Go ahead. See, see, that's the difference between <clears throat> having twenty strikes per second versus having two or three strikes, but really selling the punches and selling the head button. I mean, that felt. I, I felt the blows there. I, I felt it. <laughs> you know, how, how long did it take to 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 uh, to shoot that fight? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we had twenty minutes to put it together. So I, so I talked to Goldberg. I said, Goldberg, we got to throw in this fight. Let's put it together. I said, I'm going to use a stick on you. <clears throat> and uh, and then then total shooting time, we had about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. Ooh. So here's here's the funny thing, Bruno, Ooh. about that fight is that we're going at each other. And uh, the first ones were kind of light. And you could tell it's not, you know, I didn't feel the energy. So I said, you know what? Let's amp it up, Bill. Bill's, Bill's his name. Um, so so let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. You know, let's let's play. I'm I'm, I'm a, even though I'm a small guy, I'm, I'm pretty tough. I can take it. Like when he was tagging, he wasn't obviously killing me, but he was he was laying it in there, and I was laying it in there. The funny thing is, like with like we cut out some of the scenes because we had to short it up. But he's throwing these kicks, and I'm blocking these kicks. And I tell you, they were strong ass kicks. They were wow. strong ass kicks. So I really was blocking, blocking, blocking. The next morning. Love the trapping. And you know, yeah. when I'm kicking him, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And so even when he tapped my hand, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, Bruce Lee concept kind of thing. Where, okay, he gets here. What do I do? I got this kick right here. So boom, boom. So I'm tagging him, right? The next morning, I am, I am, no exaggeration, Bruno. Uh, you didn't see it here, but purple from here to here, both sides, because I was blocking that. <laughs> purple, purple. <laughs> I am like dying, right? <laughs> so I'm driving to set. I am messed up like there's no tomorrow, right? <laughs> I get to set and I'm dragging myself out of the car in pain, you know, come on. And I see Goldberg. So then it's like, go straighten up. You're walking like nothing, right? Hey, Bill, how's it going? And he looks at me, looks at him. And then we look at each other for a brief moment. And then you see our both our shoulders go down. And he goes, you want to see something? He pulled up his shirt. Oh, big, massive bruise <laughs> where I'm kicking him, right? Uh -huh. So he said, last night, I was so beat. He says, I was so beat, Art. I was at the kitchen having a cup of tea, and I woke up the next morning right there. So he, he, he was, he was, we were both beat up, but it was so much fun. Because we kept, like, we kept at it. We kept going at it. We kept going at it. I mean, I said, okay, give me, put the camera here. Let's go again, Bill. Boom, put the camera here. Let's go again, Bill. Let's keep mm -hmm. going. Let's, we do, I mean, we didn't do pieces. We did nothing but masters. We did, I don't know, about 15 yeah, masters in, in that period of time. An hour and 20 minutes, that's insane to, to shoot a fight scene like that. Um, <laughs> so has has 2020 been a good year for you or uh, not so much with all with all this no, shit going on yeah. with all this shit going on you know again um, it, it's sad for, for you know what we're going through as, as, as a world as a nation and, and what people are suffering but um, fortunately blessed I'm very 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 blessed that, that it's been a great year you know, great year. You know, I did a TV show I've done some uh, some movies I did some more acting and some shows and developing and uh, right now basically we're ready to uh, sign on two two more features to do this year and that all started last year so god has been good god has been good i've been very very blessed and uh, and again i say that because i'm just grateful as all heck you know very grateful mm -hmm. I would love to finish uh, uh, finish this uh, this chat off with with a couple of uh, I wouldn't say quick fire questions, but I'm really interested in since you're obviously a movie nerd like me as well. Uh, you must enjoy some good music. You must enjoy some good food. So I, I really wanted to know a little bit more about you. So, what's your favorite food? My favorite food still. I mean, it's a it's a it's a toss up between Chinese and Mexican. It really is, man. I love if, them both. I if mean, you I had love... to choose, if you had to choose, 
Probably Mexican. <laughs> I grew up Mexican. I've been eating that stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's your favorite uh, Mexican food? My favorite Mexican food is burrito I tacos. Love, love to death. I love I love burritos because you can make all kinds of burritos. You can make yeah. I mean literally. But but my favorite thing is carnitas, which is which is the worst thing in the world for you. But carnitas is this fried pork with sugar and. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, <laughs> nice. That sounds good. Why not add some sugar to 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 the beef <laughs> to the to the pork <laughs> to the pork? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> movies. I want the best movies martial arts movies ever for you and i want the best movies of all time for you without being martial arts movies i think the best one to me is still enter, enter the dragon mm, enter the yeah. dragon not because it's a great movie but, but because bruce lee made it a great movie it's a phenomenal phenomenal film i just so blessed to, to have seen that film and in terms of regular movies i mean there, there's it's a toss-up between believe it or not casablanca and high plains drifter for different reasons but High Plains Drifter to me was probably the best Clint Eastwood film ever made. To me. Oh, I never saw that I one. I never it. saw that one. Yeah, it's a great Western. And just amazing, amazing. And then Casablanca, I mean, I would always see clips of it. And it wasn't until five years ago I finally sat down and saw the whole thing. Yep, me too, like, me too. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I was crying still. I've seen it like half a dozen times in World War. And every time I'm always like, <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Come on, How Rich. badass was that guy? That Humphrey Borgraf was badass. Oh, my I love God. It. I love it. He had such yeah. voice, such, such charisma. They, yeah. they, they were, they were yeah. amazing. So other Absolutely. than the other than the Enter the Dragons of uh, I, I I want I want a couple more uh, martial arts titles. W w which other movies do you like? <laughs> you know, other than Bruce Lee and film, other than the obvious ones. Yeah, the first film I was exposed to, <clears throat> and again I was a, a junkie as a kid, man. It was Five Fingers of Death. Oh, Five Fingers of Death with Lowly. Lowly. That yeah. was like Shaw yeah, Brothers. It was amazing. Yes, yes. And and uh, what was it? Karate, the Kung Fu Cat. <laughs> In those days, they used to have the weird ass titles. Kung Fu but, Cat. I don't know those, that yeah, the Kung Fu Cat and the Chinese Professionals, man. Those three films. I remember as a kid seeing that stuff. It's like wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Those were the three. I mean, early, early. I think seventies type films, but they were phenomenal, phenomenal, <laughs> brother. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I I I really enjoy. It's it's funny because. I do enjoy, obviously, I love action movies. But if right. if I'm gonna pop something in my uh, in my, I'm gonna say DVD, but nobody pops DVDs anymore. <laughs> if I if I, if I'm gonna watch if I'm gonna watch anything, it's probably not gonna be an action movie. It's probably gonna be one of the old movies, like uh, I don't know. I, I, Stuff, even romantic comedies like The Goodbye Girl yes. with Richard Dreyfuss. I yes. love those. Come on. I, I love them. Yes. I love how <clears throat> how they were so simple, but uh, but with with a great story. I mean, the story is 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 very important to mm -hmm. me. If if there's action, just because of action, just for the sake of action, I want it to be at least a little justified, you know. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because every, every year I still watch White Christmas with no, the Bing Crosby and. Uh, to, and I still, still, I just saw it this year, and I still, at the end, I'm always like kind of teary-eyed before the <laughs> Christmas comes on, man. I can't watch. Um, I can't watch that. What's that movie that really kills me? Oh, Ghost. Ghost with Patrick. Oh Swayze. my God! Whenever I watch that one, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God! I'm such a pussy. I'm such a pussy. I can't <laughs> yeah, believe it. No. Don't go, Patrick. Don't go, Swayze. Don't go. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, brother. That's why I told you. If you look at look at like, like this room right here. I mean, I have my Bruce Lee area that you're not looking at right now. But you, you know, I got my comedies. I love some of these old, you know, Danny Kay, uh, Abbott and Costello, Jerry Lewis. Wow. You know, those are. I mean, my God, that to me is like. Wow, you know, and you got to have those it's, references, otherwise you're going to be so square in your approach to action. You, if you're yes. just into action, I mean, people who are only yeah. into stuff like Avengers, I mean, nothing against the Avengers, obviously, but no, no, it's no, not. Right. They're going to be so square that they're not going to give it a little bit more depth in the in the in the right. the approach, I guess. And what about music? What type of music do you listen to? What does art so much? Believe it or not. To? Many many years ago, I met him, but to this day, it's some of my favorite stuff is Elton John. Wow, Elton nice, John is just nice. amazing, you know. What a great and, artist! And I like yeah. a lot, a lot of the, you know, the the seventies grooves, the Motown. I mean, I love all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. more than the contemporary stuff. And mm -hmm. again, it lasts. If you look at it, it's classic. It lasts to this day. Yeah. You know, yeah. again, go back to Bruce Lee. 
to this day, he is still relevant. 40 years after he died. 80th anniversary, next week they're doing kind of a, Shannon Lee's doing a, something for him, uh, 80th birthday. How yeah. crazy is that? To yeah. think of him, 80 years old. 80 years old. Bruce is 80 years old. But to me, he's always going to be like, he's always going to be 32 to me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. but in a way he will Absolutely. always be older than me, so I'm not older than Bruce Lee. You know what you know what I mean? <laughs> because yep. I'm now 36, yep. so I surpassed him in, in a way. But he's always yeah. going to be older and wiser than me, even though he stayed at 32. Oh man! Right, right, right. It's it's the uh, what, what do you, you know, call somebody... it? The Bruce Lee effect, right? The Bruce Lee effect. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I told you. I mean, I, obviously, I never met him. He was gone before I you know when i was god you know a kid but i i managed to get very close because in my mind i said you know what i want to come closer to so i i hired john saxon for my films you know into the dragon yeah i trained with some of his students you know from richard danny jerry poteen i actually met uh you know met linda a couple of times uh oh. his mother believe it or not taught me how to use chopsticks bruce lee's mother how crazy what? is that really? yeah yeah grace crazy yeah Grace, oh. Grace Lee, <clears throat> many, many years ago. No, 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 tell me that story. What this, happened? This, yeah. How, how? <laughs> I, huh. I was volunteering at this, this Bruce Lee Museum. There was a thing called the World of Bruce Lee Museum. Yeah. I discovered it in Hollywood. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is awesome. The Bruce Lee Museum. Here I am, you know, my teens. So I used to volunteer every weekend. And and actually, one weekend, uh, the quick story is that we had the... Uh, we were doing like a, a roving displays to different tournaments, stuff like that. So they'd ask me, they go, Hey, do you mind bringing the stuff to the, to the tournament the next day? So that night they had the, the actual, the, one of the original game of death suits, the one with Kareem's footprint on it, which is oh, kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. so bitching. And then they had the new chucks that, that he had used in it to the dragon, the, oh, the black ones. They, they were, and then, so we had that song. I had that at my house. I had it at my house over that one night and all night long, I'm watching it. <laughs> I'd leave the country, man. I'd leave the country, man. I'd leave the country. This, this is mine. You can't take it. I'm off to Mexico. <laughs> Bye. See you. <laughs> Hasta luego. Hasta luego, cabrones. I wanted to, man. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, man. It was so, so awesome, you know. Then one, one, one month, they were doing this, this big event in New York. So pretty much, you know, they, 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 there was a Bruce Lee tribute that I helped them coordinate. And we did. We did a thing in New York on, 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 uh, at the Beacon Street Theater in New York. And, uh, and Grace Lee went down there and uh, we were out there eating. And I'm just, I mean, I'm just like, you know, in awe with this lady. So, so I'm asking for a fork. And then she looked at me. She just did this on my hand. And then she put those sticks in my hand. And she's, she literally, I still don't know how to use them that good, but she literally showed me how to use it. So I was like, it's Wussy's mother. What are you going to do? You're not going to say no. <laughs> Man. I wish you had a so knife cool. phone back then, right? <laughs> yeah. Just one second. Just one second. Um, could you imagine? <laughs> could yeah. you imagine? Man? Yeah. Amazing. You Amazing know, life can... experience, man. Amazing life yeah. experience. Your proactivity, your uh, open-mindedness, the way you receive and are able to receive and leave have a, a, an empty cup in order to receive some more. That is amazing. That is exactly what I found here in the, your book. I would not uh, oh, let this finish you, without me showing everybody your book, Art Camacho. <laughs> thank I you. love the way it is an autobiography, but by the middle of the book, you're starting to give advice. It's like, okay, enough right. about me. I want really you guys to know what I have learned through the process. And this is very important because sometimes a lot of autobiographies and I'm thinking of, uh, for example, to give it a little example, uh, the last Woody Allen autobiography, <clears throat> which I haven't read, but mm -hmm. my girlfriend did, she was telling me like, mm -hmm. it's a great autobiography. The guy's a great writer, obviously, but he's always trying to make sure people know that he's not a pedophile. So he's, he's always like, oh. okay, let me explain this. Okay, let me explain that. Okay, this is what happened. This is what happened. So. Sometimes autobiographies go through a route that is like, I want to explain myself because of this and not really have a, a feeling for what the reader might get in the, in the long term. Right. And uh, so by learning your story, uh, it's, it's obviously motivating and inspiring, but it's also uh, from midpoint on the, the, the way that you give... Uh, a filmmaking one-on-one, 101, 
and advice for young filmmakers and how people with uh, low uh, amounts of money can do some sort of right. art of their own. I, I found that really refreshing in your in your uh, no. uh, book. And also you have Thank this. You so much, Bruno. Oh, you're welcome. And you had this. Um, you also sent me this trailer for this new TV show that you're doing. You want to talk to me a, yeah. a little bit about that? It's an El Rey Network. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was, and, and, and as I told you, it was a kind of thing where they called me up and they said we want to do a talk show, martial arts kind of talk show with your unique, you know, experience. And at first, I, you know, I said, great. I'll produce it, direct it. I'll, I'll cast. Do you have anybody in mind? They go, no, you. <laughs> we have you in mind to host. I go, host. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, you have know, done a lot of things, but I haven't hosted a, you know, interview show. And so then I said, well, if I do, do you mind if I do it Camacho style? They go, absolutely. Do it however you want. It's your show. So I, you know, I, I did a Camacho style. And by that, I mean, I had to include action. You know, mm. because I'm not as good as you, Bruno. Trust me, I'm oh. nowhere near. And I, I tip oh, my on. hat to you, brother. God bless come you. On. I mean, I'm being honest. I'm being honest from my heart, man. I told George that I love, uh, you know, I love what you do, brother. A lot of respect. And then I've seen your martial arts. Wow. Uh. God willing, we can work together. Seriously, brother. Seriously, oh, I love brother. that. I love that talent. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not. Now that you, I know. But, Now that I've know that you've become a, a kinder director, I I I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> kinder general, come on, Joe. Twenty years ago, oh no no no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not twenty years. You go crying every day. Damn that, Camacho. I'm a flower. <laughs> I'm a flower. <laughs> That's right. But you know what? The funny thing is, when when even then, you'd see me intense and blah 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 blah, blah pushing pushing pushing. The minute you yell cut, I'm kissing, we're hugging, we're, we're loving each other. Yeah. You know, that was, was always the thing for me. It's like never, you know. It was just work, right? Yeah. It was just work. It's yeah. just work. And then afterwards, I'd be joking. And even before, you know, before we yell action between, you know, action and between action and cut, then you got the intensity before and after. You know, you get Art Camacho, you know, because I love these guys and I want everybody to 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 be great and and live their dreams. And that's that's the saying I got from meeting. A, <clears throat> I don't know if you heard of this film called Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, well, I, the, I, the was musical. Hooked, I saw it and yeah, the musical. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I love that music when the, the, the mother Maria is in, is in the cave. Try not oh. to get worried. Try not. I yes. Love that part. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it gives me the chill to chill just to, <laughs> mm -hmm. to listen to that song. I remember that. Very everything's vividly, yeah. all right. Just yeah. everything's fine. Exactly. Wow. But you know what? That film, I saw it, and I loved it to death. And and then I remember even as a kid, I, I bought the, the CD. I mean, not the CD, the album at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and then eventually I started going to the play, to the musicals, the live musicals that Ted Neely, who's the star, started performing in the live musicals. Wow. And I ended up meeting him. Wow. And, uh, and we had this long talk. You know, it was, was really cool about the talk, and I won't be long about it, but... I asked him about that scene. How did he approach the role? Because he was so, I mean, when you're talking to him, Bruno, it's almost like you're talking to Jesus. I mean, the guy is so <laughs> into the role, you know? And he told me, he says, you know what, Art? When I saw that, when I approached that scene in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he's talking to God and asking him, why, why me, God? He said, it wasn't a man talking to God. It was a son talking to his father. And it almost brought me to tears because he says, Father, if you love me, why are you doing this? Why do I have to go die for you? This is love. And, and so just opened my, my mind. I blew wow. my mind away. It changed my spirituality. But then he signed my program and he says all kinds of nice stuff. But the last thing he signed was art, keep living the dream. Mm. And that phrase stuck to me. And that's, that's, I stole it from Ted Neely is keep living the dream. And I'm telling you, Bruno, you are doing so much good for people. And, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm being honest with you. You're, you're really good. And I've seen the videos of you, your physicality, shit. I, I, I hope God willing, seriously, we work together, but keep living the dream. Seriously, uh, brother. What, what a great way to, 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 <laughs> to, to finish, to finish this off. Uh, uh, what a great, I was, I was going to finish off by asking you for, for advice, but I mean, you said it all right. Like keep living the dream, and and when it comes from a guy who played Jesus Christ superstar, I mean that's got to mean something. It's 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 a lot yeah. more than the average guy saying keep living the dream. Yeah, see ya, brother. <laughs> it's a lot more than <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it's, not, it's a lot more than a fortune cookie. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? And, and and just lastly, Bruno, if I ever you ever catch me complaining about bitching about my life and this and that, punch me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I have no right. <laughs> I have no right. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> tough. It's tough. It's tough to 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 remind ourselves of that every once in a while. But uh, we we should. Art, right, uh, yeah. thank you so much. So we had uh, some technical difficulties, but uh, oh. this was a, an an amazing time we we spent together here. And uh, I hope you had lunch already because we started at your 1 p.m. So I hope you had lunch at like 12:30 or something. I'm starving. That's my <laughs> diet now, man. I'm gonna get cut like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I screwed you because now you're gonna have like 10 burritos instead of just half half of a burrito <laughs> like you were. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much once thank again. You. This was a gem, and uh, I hope to see you soon. And maybe someday we'll work together. Who knows, man? If you're nice. You gotta do it. Gotta do it. <laughs> gotta put it out there. I'm a kinder, gentler Art Camacho. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you so much. Thanks. See you. Take care, buddy.